Welcome back to the High Tech Freedom Sales Podcast. My guest today, Jeremy Lenor, has been in sales for years, but he actually started in sports marketing and then realized that there's a lot more opportunity in the sales profession. So he moved into sales and then moved up the ranks, and he is now leading a global team. During our discussion, Jeremy emphasized the power of learning from other successful people in your desired field that you want to be in. And then he talks about his four key traits of high-performing salespeople. So you want to check that out. He then um, pulls and shares some information uh, about his experience as a point guard at the collegiate level and highlights, as an example, the importance of vision, flexibility, and the value of fundamentals in the sales role. I really know you're going to enjoy this episode. Welcome to the High Tech Freedom Podcast. This is a podcast where we bring successful tech sales professionals, thought leaders, and entrepreneurs to share best practices, insights, and lessons learned with other tech sales professionals. As a sales professional, the more we learn, the more we earn. Once we earn it, how can we put those hard earned commission dollars back to work to build additional income streams that will create the freedom we are all working to achieve? I'm your host, Chris Freeman. I'm a high-tech sales leader, real estate investor, and lifetime learner. All right, Jeremy, welcome to the High Tech Freedom Podcast. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Chris. Thank you for having me. Excited to be here. So we uh, we just met for the first time, and I think I stumbled across you in LinkedIn. You, uh, I just, you know, I'm always perusing, and I noticed that you had a book out there called the point guard approach. So we'll get uh, we'll get back to that in a minute. But um, Jeremy, why don't you just tell real quick the audience a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. So you know I've been in the commercial side of early, mid stage, and, and large established businesses for the last really 20, 22 years now. Um, started my career actually in Major League Soccer uh, in the front office staff, selling tickets to Tampa Bay Mutiny games down in beautiful Tampa, Florida. Uh, did that for a couple of years, got uh, kind of stayed in the sports marketing realm, had a really neat venture with uh, Playboy Sports. We launched a, a national golf tournament for them and, and some advertising tied to that, which eventually led me to uh, medical sales and joined a, a large Fortune 16 company, Cardinal Health, really cut my teeth in both uh, medical sales, but also that was my first field management job where I got to build teams and um, did that you know, for about six years which led me to another earlier stage uh, med tech startup. And, and um, from there, the last you know, 10, 12, 15 years have been early stage med tech uh, with one stint in software sales, which I know you focus a lot on here and, and uh, tech sales. So I, I did do a, a startup called Fat Cloud based out of Los Angeles for a couple of years. And we did big data and, and .NET big data, um, non-SQL databases for those who understand that realm. Uh, and, that, and that was really uh, a, a formative experience. And then I got to learn a lot about a different vertical and then take some of those lessons and apply them back in medical sales, which now I, I returned to and have been for the last you know, several years. So I'm currently the senior vice president of global sales for Providence Medical Technology. We're a medical device company focused on treatments for degenerative spine disease, specifically cervical spine disease. We've got an innovative line of products to um, to market to orthopedic and neurosurgeons to help them treat those high risk patients. Wow, that's quite the career. So far, so good. Still, you know, I, I'm, I'm like completed the, I guess maybe the first and second quarters. I don't know where I'm at. I don't give away my age, but I still feel like I've got a, quite a bit to go. Sure. Yeah. Well, so um, Jeremy, now, uh, so senior leader running a global team. How big is your team? So we've got um, a hybrid sales force. So I've got about 100 distributors, uh, both domestically and in certain um, international markets. And then my direct team is about 30 direct reports and, and you know varying down our hierarchy. So area vice presidents down to regional managers and territory managers, et cetera. All right. So you're keeping busy. Yes. Well, so Jeremy, how did you go from sports marketing working for uh, a soccer team, an MLS soccer team, to uh, to medical sales? It was an interesting, you know, at that time, uh, you know, for those of you 20, 22 years ago, you know, pharmaceuticals was a big deal. 
um, medical device was, was, you know, kind of evolving, but the kind of the pathway into medical sales was you, you either went into pharma or biotech, or maybe like a, a med device company, but they always wanted you have a lot of sales, other sales experience or relative, you know, medical experience. But the only way in to it was, you know, you, you, you had to wedge in somewhere. So, right. you know, I just, I, I actually had an uncle that was a anesthesiologist told me some tips and tricks some companies to maybe think about. I met some people that were doing the job I wanted to do. And through that experience started to build my resume and take what I had already learned in MLS and start to leverage that, get interviews. And, and luckily it was just fortunate, you know, met the right person at the right time and got an opportunity with a great company, Cardinal Health. A manager took a risk on me and, you know, took somebody from outside and, and showed me the ropes and the rest was history. You know, so you just said something there, which I think is really good advice for whatever is the next step that you want to do, whether it's in your career, even a I don't know, hobby, personal life, it's find somebody that's doing it today and go pick their brain, Walk, follow them, sit down, buy them coffee, buy them lunch, learn from them, network with them. And, you know, that is how you kind of possibly put yourself above the rest of the pack. You know, I think back to when I was in inside sales, I was a, I was an in inside sales. I was a BDR. I was out there cold calling every day. Back then, you'd send physical packages to customers, um, uh, catalogs, and stuff like that. But I desperately wanted to get into outside sales. I just thought that was the coolest thing. You are, I mean, if you if you got into outside sales, field sales, man, you made it. And so there was a an older gentleman in my office, and I would I was like a puppy dog, man. I would follow this guy everywhere. I would ask him to take me on calls. And I just ride along with them. And next thing I knew, I'm out there on calls with him, learning from him, learning from his customers and just watching that engagement because you're not going to get that just sitting in the office. And when the next opening came up, you know, so eventually somebody left and uh, I, you know, I was a natural fit because I had the support of the other field sellers in the office. Like, yeah, you got to go tap Chris, man. He's been out on calls. He's been great. He's our number one, number one guy. Yeah, no, I, I, I couldn't agree more. And I think to piggyback on that even further, when I think about career progression, so that's one phase is, hey, what do I want to do next? And then go start learning about that network. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. People are doing it already. Go find those people and learn from the best. The other piece is then, which it sounds like you did, is start to act the part. So do the thing that you want to do, whether you have the title, the role, whatever it is. When I wanted to be a manager and I was a field sales rep, I started to take on responsibility from my manager. What can I do for you, manager? What, can I lead that next call? Can I do a field ride? Can I train the new hire? Can I, you know, fill in the blank? What are those things that managers do that I wasn't doing? And then just start doing them, you know? And I wasn't good at any of them at first, but I, I will tell you when I actually made the leap to manager and I'd already done most of those things, I was ahead of some of the managers that had already been in place for a while. Because I, I was doing it too, and I was passionate about it, and I wanted to get better, and I wanted to learn. But it's, I guess the mantra in short is, do the role you want to do before you're doing it. Start to take on those activities, that responsibility, and most importantly is the mindset. You know, take the mindset on. You wanted to be an outside sales rep. What's that mindset? How's that different than the, the uh, SDR inside? It's, it's different. Totally. That is, uh, I mean, that's such great, great advice. It's... Um... You know, it's if you want to progress in your career, sitting back and just waiting for that next step to happen rarely works, right? You have to be pretty focused on what you want and you have to start doing some things different to get there. I've shared in the past on previous uh, episodes, you know, I, at some point in my career, I wanted to go into management and I was kicking butt in sales. And my view was, all right, how do you progress? Just kick butt, right? Let the numbers speak for themselves. But it wasn't happening. And what I learned, it, was, it wasn't my manager, but it was another manager within the company who I had a relationship with. He said, you know, Chris, if you really want to progress, maybe start helping out other people. You know, I was always very protective of my, of my patch, you know, what's working. And that was a real eye opener. And just you know, one thing that I did, which I highly recommend anybody that wants to get more visibility within their company is get involved with like your new hire program, you know, step up. And they're always looking for people to coach, present, teach the new hire something. And it's a great way to get your, your name and your, your, uh, just get more visible within the organization. Yeah. Two weeks from now, we're running a new hire training program and we invite top performers in the organization to come guest speak, participate, watch, observe, hang out, go to dinner, whatever they're comfortable with, because I, you know, absolutely agree. 
what a great way to get exposure within the organization. More importantly, and, and this actually maybe jumps ahead a little bit, but in my book, one of the things I really believe in is, is assists, right? So the point guard approach is just drawing parallels between, you know, basketball and, and specifically I was a point guard and, and some of the things that po- really good point guards do, they provide assists to other players, right? Same thing you just talked about. Like if you want to, you want to jump into leadership. A lot of that has to do with sacrificing. A lot of that has to do with you put others before yourself, but even just as a high performing sales rep, you don't have to hide all those tips and tricks to yourself. Just because you share doesn't mean you're not going to still be the top because they're going to apply what they're going to apply. They're going to hear, but the more you're giving and giving and providing, it's going to come around. I, I, you know, I promise you that the idea of the focus on what can you provide for others? And by the way, that could be your customer. If you're delivering great value all the time and you're like, how can I improve my customer? Whatever field you're in, this applies every spectrum of sales, whatever product or service or technology or innovation you're bringing to the table. If you're focused on that customer assisting them and not your commission check and not what can I get out of this and what, what my ranking is going to be. By flipping those things around and the assist becomes the, the thing you're focused on, the outcomes seem to just fall into place. And good karma. I do believe in good karma. It, it does come around when you're helping a lot of other people. When you need it the most, they're going to be there for you. So, you know, for, for what it's worth. Yeah, you know, and then that uh, that builds stronger relationships. And, you know, fast forward, you've been working, you know, for 20 plus years, you never know when those relationships come back around. Um, maybe you need them, maybe they need you, but, uh, you know, you can't have that without, you know, giving something in, in advance. So Jeremy, going back to your book, so um, thought, what was the driver for for the book? So the driver was one, I wanted to write a book. <laughs> <laughs> that was the that was the first driver, and and I had sat down with uh, one of our customers. It was a a physician in Houston, and we were just doing a dinner. And he was talking about this was back when blogging was a big deal. There was a lot of blogging happening, and he was blogging on you know orthopedic surgery and rehabilitation and disease states, and he was just blogging all the time to kind of build a presence. And he had some things to share, and he, and then a publisher approached him and said, "Hey, if you can put all these blogs together." I think you got a book and we'll we'll publish it for you if you can do it in like 90 days or some really short time frame. He told me the story and I had been thinking about, hey, wow, it'd be really neat to publish something. I'm not a trained writer, but I've got some ideas, this, this concept I've been working on. And he just gave me that kind of shove to say, hey, just do it. Go, go try it. Here's a way to start. And, you know, basically I just, I, I started and, and it was all on planes, trains and automobiles because I was a VP of sales. So I'm, I'm flying across the country. I'm doing 150,000 miles a year domestically. I'm in hotels three nights a week. Instead of doing other things, there's a lot of other things you could do. I took time and I, I tried to write. And it over the course of three, four years, I'm writing, I'm editing, I'm getting feedback from other people. And, and that's how I wrote the book. The concept within the book was what I mentioned is, you know, I was a point guard, um, played basketball my whole life, but I ended up playing college basketball in Pennsylvania at a school called Slippery Rock University, Division II school. Um, And what I realized as I got into the business world is there's so many lessons, so many things that I do naturally that came from what I learned playing basketball. And it wasn't really specifically basketball, but the way I kind of conceived the book and structured it was around this idea of the point guard and these um, principles that I really believe in. One vision, you know, point guards got to have a great vision on the court, right? Because if they don't see the court, they miss the open players. They don't see what's happening. I mean, vision may be the most important thing for a great business person, regardless of your title, CEO or SDR or somewhere in between. You've got to see where you want to be. You got to see the the market. You've got to understand your territory, the dynamics, the products, all these things. And if you have your head down all the time and you're just focused on this, you're missing it, right? So that and many others. So I, I go through basically eight principles in the book and, and kind of describe how the parallels between what I learned and what, what I've experienced in the business world and, and how that's helped with performance, both for myself and teams that I've been a part of and, and witnessed and, and also built. Yeah, I love, the, I love the tie back to the basketball and to the point guard position. Before we jump into the topic, I wanted to let you know that we just launched a monthly drawing for one of our insulated high-tech freedom tumblers. 
Now, I've been sending these out as a thank you gift to each of our guests, and the response has been great. You know, everyone has a full size coffee cup, a Yeti, or whatever brand that they might use, but not everybody has the small tumbler that you can put your wine or beverage of choice in. And they're great for the deck, beach, camping, or just, you know, just keeping your drink warm or cold. Now, I'm not selling these, but I am excited about them. So we decided to offer these up to the loyal podcast listeners by doing a monthly drawing. So if you're interested, go to hightechfreedom.com forward slash mug, that's M-U-G, and you'll see a picture of the Tumblr and you can enter. We'll just collect your name, phone number, and email. And if you do win, we'll then follow up and ask for your mailing address so we know where to send it. If you don't win, your name stays in so you don't need to re-enter. So besides vision, what's another one or two of the top uh, lessons or takeaways from the book? We talked about assist, but I think flexibility was one. So, you know, flexibility is really important in sales. You know, you have this plan and, and no plan survives initial contact with the enemy, right? So as soon as you're, you enter that sales call, if you're a rep, you have this script in mind, you've got these questions you want to ask, and then boom, it flips on its head. And now you better be able to move and you better be able to move quickly, right? And adapt to the situation. So that, that's an example of flexibility, I think, live for a sales rep. There's flexibility when it comes to leadership. There's flexibility when it comes to building a team or a company because things aren't going to go your way and they're not going to go the way you plan them to go. So if you're not comfortable with that change and that ambiguity, a lot of times you can get stuck and it sets you back. You may recover, but you may waste a lot of time in between. So, you know, that that's that's one. Um, you know, and I'm also a big believer in fundamentals. So as a basketball player, especially as a point guard, if you can't dribble the ball, if you can't deliver a great pass, if you can't knock down a, an open layup, just really remedial, simple fundamentals, that's the, that's the building blocks to get to the next level, to get to the more dynamic stuff, the behind the back passing and under pressure. If you don't have your fundamentals down, you're, you're cooked. Same thing with sales, same thing with leadership, same thing with being an entrepreneur. You've got to have sound fundamentals to lean on when the pressure's high. When it's the end of the quarter, the numbers, you know, you're looking at the board, you're, you're off your number. you got to be able to lean on something. And, and a lot of that has to do with, you know, am I doing the right thing the right way over and over and over again? Because that will yield get great results. Yeah. You know, on that topic of fundamentals, you know, it's, it is, that's the beauty of sales, right? It's, it doesn't have to be overly complicated. And, you know, when you get really, really good at the fundamentals, when things get tough, when the pressure, you know, the pressure cooker's hot and it's about ready to burst, if you're always working on your fundamentals, doing the basics really well, you don't have to think about it, right? You can, it allows you to think about the problem versus worrying about, all right, what do I do next? How do, how does this process need to play out, right? You're doing it day in and day out. It does make the job a lot easier. Interesting. Yeah. We talk on that end, just to maybe cliff note that practicing the right techniques the right way so in basketball like if you if you practice at practice speed meaning like you just kind of go through the motions when it comes to the game you may have practiced but you haven't practiced at game speed in sales if you if you're not role playing at game speed if you're not planning at game speed if you're not you know working the market at the speed you need to you are going to miss and when the pressure's on especially in a sales call when you get hit with that you know, objection and you haven't dealt with that, you haven't verbalized it, you haven't practiced in the mirror or with a teammate or a manager, it can be really hard to deliver when it comes to when it comes time to do it. So, you know, at my organization, we, we really focus on role playing and doing those fundamentals, even though I've got reps that are seven, eight, 10 years in their territory, they still will role play like it's their first day at sales training because it makes them that much better when they have to deliver to that neurosurgeon at the scrub sink before a case. Yeah. When it's pressure's on. I love that. I, you know, I've been with, uh, I was with one company um, at one point in my career where we we got pretty focused on really doing a, a good, clear whiteboard message. And I had another guest on, uh, Brian Burns, and he was talking about, you know, practicing that over and over and over again, because when you go to then deliver it, you can deliver it more conversationally versus like you're presenting it and then you can start to focus on less about the specific words and more about how you're communicating it the kind of the inflectuation you know the, the voice you know going you know how you're emphasizing something and uh you know and then more comfortably be able to to your point about flexibility 
adapt if they say something, they ask a question, you know, and just make it again more conversational. And I've seen I've seen reps where they're, they sit there and they record themselves, right? They practice it, they record it. My kids used to do that for their school presentations, and uh, I loved it. I, you know, just using the technology that you have. And there's a lot available, so yeah, there's no, there's no excuse anymore not to be able to practice. Like you know, you're sitting in the car as a rep driving to your next sales call. You could be learning. You can be listening to a podcast. You could be you know on you know uh, recording yourself, listening to uh, recording of yourself before evaluating, and, and all those things. I completely agree with you in that the. We, we call it, you know, our elevator pitch. Like if you have that down and you're practicing that with the janitor at the hospital, if you're talking to the, the physician assistant for us, or if you're any stakeholder you come across, that elevator pitch should be a very high level. This is the value of our organization. This is what we do. This is what our mission is, whatever it is, but it's 30 seconds to a minute. You get that down cold, everything else just becomes a little bit easier, right? Yeah. You build, you build off of that. And that's a great example of like a fundamental that you want to have wrote. We were doing some, uh, we were doing some spot checks at one point to where our, uh, our, uh, America's VP and the America's engineering leader were, they were calling up reps around a, a particular message and just doing spot checks and say, Hey, give me your message. And, uh, you know, so some reps, you know, that would boom, you're in the fire right now. And some reps, you know, totally rose and just kick butt and some like, uh, you know, they weren't quite ready for it. And which is fine, right? It, you know, it just was a reminder how important it is that at any point you need to be crisp. And then there's reps that weren't ready. I'm sure the next time that happened, they were ready. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, so we're, we're already touching on some of this, but you know, so you've got a view of, you know, a global sales force, um, some, I assume some very successful distributors of what you do today. You know, when you look around at, at the sellers in the field, What's what are the top ten or twenty percent of the top sellers doing that makes them great? Separates them from, from the rest of the pack. They have a plan. One, so they they know the objective in front of them. They have a a plan that they are willing to execute against. But more importantly, they're flexible and they iterate. So they have this plan. They're going after it. They're working the plan. They're holding themselves accountable. But then when that not working that one thing they're trying or that approach they change it they iterate they may get feedback from somebody they're open they're coachable and now the plan has changed but back guess what they haven't dropped that pace of execution it's just like boom 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 okay that's not working i'm trying it this way or wow uh, that's working really well i'm doubling down on that you know I'm, i'm getting lots of leads from linkedin right now so i am every morning for 30 minutes i'm gonna spend time on linkedin doing some posts, responding to other posts, doing some of my pipeline work there because that's working really well. I've gotten two great opportunities out of that, you know, for example. And then, you know, I think the probably the third big bucket is, um, and we touched on this a little bit, is that they're willing to help others. They're part of the team. There's a sense of community with them. Uh, when another rep or another manager needs advice, they're they're willing to step up. Oh, you need me to come help that Yes, love to do that. They're they're part of the the greater community, even though they're they're really high performing. And then finally, there's a level of just resilience. And I think in sales, sales leadership, you got to have a, a pretty thick skin. You just there's a lot more no's than there are yes. There's a lot more losses than there are wins. And those that can just kind of plow through, you know, take that, learn from it. Don't take it too personally. You're gonna miss your number every once in a while. How do we build on it? How do we hit the next month, the next quarter, the next year? And, you know, I'd say at a high level, those those four areas are traits that I see commonly and with real high performers. So plan, iterate, assisting, helping others, willing to be part of the team and then resilience. Those are those are big, you know, big principles for um, for high performers that I've been around. Yeah. And they all they all they all pretty much connect together. You know, when I think about resiliency. I mean, this is a tough business and sales is, and you have to ha- take the long approach. And I, I love your comment about, you know, you're probably going to hear more no's, you're probably going to lose more than you win. And the people that get fixated and frustrated on that piece, I mean, it's fine to get frustrated as long as you're getting frustrated and turning, turning that into how do I get better? How do I assess what didn't go well? And maybe tweak a few things as I move forward. But, you know, it's a long game. And, you know, if you keep just focusing on, all right, let's look forward, let's not you know, it's good to look back in the rear view mirror a little bit, but let's not get fixated on it. Let's just drive forward. And if you continue to do that, man, you're going to have a great career. 
That's right. Good shooters in basketball have short memory. Yeah. Because you miss a shot. If you're worried about that last shot you missed or the last five, it's, it's the next shot that matters. It's the only thing that matters. It's the only thing. That matters. I love it. Short memory, right? Well, so you touched on pipeline as we get close to wrapping up here. Um, you know, what are you seeing out there that's working or what are reps doing nowadays to build uh, more pipeline, get more meetings, create more customer touch? So I touched on LinkedIn. So I do think social media and specifically LinkedIn, I, I'm not a big um, Instagram. I, I do know people that are successful on Instagram, but at least in our sector, um, LinkedIn seems to be really growing, um, networking like you and I have done, but also with prospects. So being able to engage in a respectful way, learn about the prospect, let them learn about you, comment on things that are going on that are mutually interesting. And then, hey, we have there's something we can bring value to you. Let, let's let's merge. So I think LinkedIn, um, and then again, not limiting that, but but social media interactions is a big one. I think peer-to-peer and networking. So not just in social media, but using customers, and this is no new technique, but I'm just the the value in it right now, kind of post pandemic, seems to be elevating a little bit. Is hey, I've got a customer. The customer loves the value we bring to them. Hey, customer, who do you know that might also share that you know intrigue or be able to adopt this technology specifically in, in our industry? And can we get you two together? How can we create that forum? Because boy, that's a lot more powerful than me trying to have my rep knock down a door cold. If we just get that warm intro. You know, and, and so we're, we're doing a lot more and not just uh, mer- how can we be creative in the way we get those networking events, peer to peer interactions, either virtually or in person and, um, you know, really building momentum off of that. In fact, we even bring customers now out on full day kind of field rides with some of our reps with with very specific. They don't go cold calling, but they have very specific series of meetings over the course of the day and maybe even overnight. And um, and helping build momentum in a, in a new territory or a, you know a pocket of a territory that we haven't had a lot of penetration. Oh, that's really interesting. So the the um, existing customer would ride along with the rep meeting with other customers. Oh, wow. Yeah. So kind of a different spin on peer to peer, and and um, you know obviously we we remunerate them for their time. The you know that that type of thing. We have a lot of restrictions in by sale so it's 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 highly regulated but um yeah just i i think that concept of, of peer-to-peer and uh using your customer base is is something that um we're, we're seeing a lot of value in yeah and i i uh you and i talked about this briefly but you know kind of post pandemic it is you know it's harder to get in front of people and so when you can get your customers out talking to your prospects I was actually interviewing a guy yesterday and we were talking a little bit about pipeline building and he was sharing with me, you know, what's working now versus what's not working. What's not working is kind of like your traditional happy hour type of thing. It's been harder to get people out for those things. But when they go and they do something that's more activity based, maybe throwing a little bit of fun, uh, you know, like a a VR event, a virtual golf, uh, top golf, um, even like an arcade type of thing. But just, you know, something that's a little bit of fun with some messaging from whatever your company, the rep, but getting some of your current accounts in there, maybe with some prospects, maybe bring a partner that can bring in some of their relationships. Uh, just the magic happens there when those people meet each other and they start talking and you know you have an opportunity to you know build a little bit of a relationship along the way. And now you have now you have access and you can come back around and maybe schedule a meeting with them. Yeah, I no, absolutely I think that um creating those synergistic uh venues makes a lot of sense again we're a little more regulated so we can't do too fun things uh unless they're based around education right so everything but physician education um one thing i would add is we've done really well partnering too with um third party lead gen uh but but to the to the extent it's not just a call center so very specific targeted outreach so, you know, hey, we want to work on Cincinnati. We have a rep there. The rep partners with the rep from the, the third party uh, firm, and, and they really come up with a strategy to reach that, that target market. And that, that's, that's been really effective for us as well. Yeah, good stuff. Well, Jeremy, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, if somebody would like to get hold of you, we'll put your LinkedIn link in the show notes. Is there any other way that you would like somebody to reach out to you? I think that's a, it's a, it's a great spot. I'm on there at least every day. And, uh, it's 
that's a perfect way to get connected. Excellent. Well, pleasure. And again, thank you for doing this. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. Have fun. Thanks again for joining us today. To get more sales and real estate tips, you can subscribe to our newsletter at hightechfreedom.com. You can also join our private Facebook and LinkedIn group that is exclusively for sales professionals. If you found a nugget of good information in the podcast, please subscribe, give us a positive rating and write a review. If there is a topic that you would like us to cover in the future, please send us a note through our website at hightechfreedom.com. Until next week, make this your best week ever.